wipe your lake's finest just don't ask him to do math ryan carter educates us on the east side of the state and jesse and i try to figure out just what monday's trade deadline holds for the minnesota wild as always we're created by new voice studios presented by soda stick brought to you by jim beam and better edge this is season three episode 117 soda stick is constantly releasing the best homage gear to minnesota Pay your respects to ODR with an association tee or hoodie, or snake any variety of palm beanies for the below zero temps. There's even a Bardown Beauties one for you to grab. Code Bardown Beauties always gets you 15% off all purchases at sodastick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company in corporate Claremont, Kentucky. From New Voice Studios. Oh, yeah, you betcha. Let's go to the boat. Discombobulate on the spot. Part of the Talk North Podcast Network. Fly out to Russia personally. <laughs> Jesse Pierce. This is off the rails. We're only a couple minutes in. Alexis Pearson. We're not going to throw batteries on, on the ice at, you know, Kirill Kaprizov. This is, we're not that crazy. Whoa. Like Bar Down Beauty's Podcast. Was it about guys getting hammered down low night after night? Uh, it's like what? everyone loves to crap on analytics, but the analytics do not lie here. We are firing Fred at the top of the hour. More hits like T. T. Starts now. Hello, everybody. We back. I'm Jesse Pierce. She's Alexis Pearson. Producer Fred fired again because he's not fired. on the record. Always fired. You know, I think that should just we're, one of these days we're going to make it real and he's just yeah. never going to come back. Well, and, and people are, you know, at this point, they probably just don't even bat an eye out of They're like, yeah, he'll be back next week. Or the only time I think anyone's ever been concerned is when you guys fired me when I was on vacation. And that one yeah. person was like, did you actually fire her? Like, like why would you do I that for me? <laughs> I know. Right. Like, absolutely insane. Back. Speaking yeah. of fired, I mean, kind of related trade deadline approaching on oh, Monday. Oh, I see what you did there. Okay. See what I did there? <laughs> People kind of getting fired. Getting yeah, kind of. Slipped, rehired, maybe? fired and rehired. Yeah. Fired, rehired. Let go. Obviously. <laughs> yes. However you want to phrase it. <laughs> right? Like we will discuss a little bit more about the trade that Minnesota did make already uh, with Nico Sturm, Tyson Jost in our up for debate segment three, which follows Ryan Carter. I hate to build Karts' ego, but he is the funniest person I've ever spoken with. Like even when he picks on me the entire yeah. time, I love it. Love it. He, that was probably uh, the interview you guys will watch in, in segment two with Karts is from the Let's Play Hockey Expo. And we did a lot of interviews that weekend. <laughs> I think that might have been my favorite, just yes. for pure entertainment value. And one of my best friends was was there. Um, shout out Allison, thanks for coming. And she texted me afterward, and she watched I think most of the interviews on Saturday. And yeah. she said Ryan Carter was by far the best one. She's like that was so funny. So was we had so to funny. we had to give it to you guys who maybe didn't get a chance to watch it, or if you are just listening. Um, and so yeah, we're we're throwing it in with this episode. It was too good to to let it slide. Too good, but uh, yeah, back to the trade deadline, which happens on Monday when you are listening to this probably maybe <laughs> um alexis do you think minnesota is going to be active do you think bill garen is looking to make some moves you hear all the rumors i can i just say this so-and-so is interested in so-and-so i yeah. hate it i hate like who cares yeah. nobody cares everyone's interested yeah, i'm in interested in a lot of things too i mean <laughs> you should see me window shopping for god's sake i mean <laughs> let's not take it too seriously okay um right yeah i this time of year you see a lot of rumors you see a lot of you know like you said those they're interested in this this is the asking price for this this team backed out of this this gm is taking a call this one's not taking a call <laughs> and it's really hard to sort through it and to keep up with it all because you don't know what how serious everything you're hearing is right i mean right. some stuff could literally be one person heard one thing and they're like oh i'm gonna tweet this out and they might be a reputable source but it just might not be as serious as what it sounds like or whatever so um it is it is tough to sort through it and you want to keep up with everything and, and guys are on the move while well, obviously making that trade um last week with um tyson jost and nico sturm um i don't know if the wild will make any more moves. And I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. If they don't, um, if there's one thing I've learned about Billy G since he's been the Minnesota wild GM is that he is very open to 
taking calls. He's very open to hearing ideas. He's mm-hmm. not the kind of guy who's like, Hey, this is all about me. I, you know, if I don't want something, I'm not going to go out and look for it. I'm not going to take your call. Um, so that's why I say like, I don't know what they're going to do. Cause I don't necessarily think the wild need to make any more moves. And that's non GM Alexis Pearson brain saying that. Um, but at the same time, I understand that, that Billy G is the kind of guy, um, who, who won't say no, uh, right off the bat. Um, what about you, Jess? You think the wild will be active? Um, on I, Monday, you know what? I can't tell. And right, and they host the Vegas Golden Knights on Monday too, which mm-hmm. makes Monday just kind of a shit that. show, right? Yeah. Like it, it is what it is. Um, had you asked me a month ago, yes, you're one piece away. You are a goalie away from a deep run. Now you've seen the Swiss cheese defense. Like you're more than one piece away, which makes mm-hmm. me think that if Bill Guerin wants to stay pat. I wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, disregard that. Like I, I, it makes sense to me. Um, like we had talked about, I think it was last week. If you're going to sign a defenseman, for instance, mm-hmm. make it to term. I don't want a rental yeah. defenseman, right? Me like neither. I want somebody that uh, and Tyson Jost is an example of that. Again, we'll talk about that more in segment three, but like, he's a guy that's going to at least be around for another year, which could help, right? You're going to, you're going to make some moves there. Mm-hmm. Um, you get some value for Nico Sturm, but yeah, I don't, I can't. I can't tell. Cause I mean, there are things that could possibly help the Minnesota wild. And mm-hmm. again, we've talked about it time and time again, you have a little bit more room to play with some money right now as it is. However, I don't know that you there's as, as Billy G even said to us earlier this week, a trade's not going to fix the problem. You can't yeah. trade to fix, right? Like, so and I really liked that quote that he said, because I do think that sports fans, a lot of times get caught up in parts of the season like this, where, yeah. especially with this Minnesota wild team we're looking at right now, where they've been very good. One of the best for most of the season. And right before the trade deadline here, they hit some issues and everybody goes into a panic of like, okay, now we have a chance to fix things. We got the trade deadline coming up. Let's get that piece, get that piece. We'll, we'll, you know, unload that contract. And it just, it doesn't work like that. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, no. it's not that easy. It's not that quick. And there's the other thing is there's no guarantee that just because you make a move you think is going to be good means it's going to pan out. We've right. seen that happen across all sports at all levels where you, you acquire somebody, you get rid of somebody, you try to finesse a contract and it just doesn't pan out. And that's not always the athlete's fault. It's not always the GM's fault. It's sometimes just not a good match. And Martin Hansel. that's just, yeah, Martin Hansel, Ryan White. Thank you for bringing the trauma. <laughs> trauma has entered the chat. Um, so it just, that's just how it goes sometimes. So I really appreciated that Billy G made a point to say that like, Hey, we can't trade our way out of problems. It's, it's really not that easy. It's not that simple, but at the same time, we're not shutting things down. We're not going to not listen to calls. So I, I agree with you, Jesse, that at this point, the wild seem to have a few more holes than what we maybe thought at the beginning of the season and throughout most of the season. And I don't know if the trade deadline will fix that or if it's worth trying to fix it. That's the bigger thing. Is it worth the risk of trying to fix right. it right now? Cause I do think the wild still have a very good hockey team. I think they have a chance to still do something come postseason. And do you want to mix that all up um, to swing for the fences? That's, right. That's exactly. And I mean, Billy G is always very adamant on the character in the room and Tyson Joe's seems like a guy that is going to fit in. He was very beloved by his Avs fans. Yeah. Welcome to all the new Avs fans I now have <laughs> on my timeline. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. And again, to quote, you can't trade your way out of problems. Like he ended that call with us on, I think it was Monday saying that exact thing time and time again, you can't <laughs> trade your way out of problems. Can't trade your way out of problems. We're like, all right, we get it. We get it. <laughs> like, you know, there are problems you can't trade your way out. And the, you know, the other interesting thing, and again, you guys know how much I harp on the goaltending struggles have been harping on the goaltending struggles before all of you have, um, he, you know, Jesse was G, cool before it was cool. I was cool before it was cool. I just want everyone to remember that. Um, when you guys were coming for me and I was like, it's still going to be a problem. Uh, no, he, uh, he had said, he's like, I'm okay with the goaltending. Like he yeah. is a firm believer. So it's like, you're not going to go get a goaltender, which I think is the biggest area of concern that you could try to fix. Right. I mean, Mark Andre Fleury stopped 46 from Boston right before they came to Minnesota. So and still lost, still <laughs> lost. I mean, Cox they still suck. lost, right. They suck. <laughs> Save Mark Andre Fleury. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I mean right now, and I hate, I'm not hitting the panic button, Minnesota wild fans, but you do need to recognize that the wild need to make the playoffs at this point. Like you have other teams coming and stepping in and, 
if there is one piece that could fix it, sure, but I don't think there is just one. Your central division champions are probably no longer Alexis. Hey, don't be a hater. There's a lot of time left in this. Maybe, maybe the Tyson Joe's Nico Sturm trade is gonna make them also swap sp- uh, swap spots in the standings. You never know. You never know. I'll agree. I mean, it's not looking good, but not looking I mean, good. Still a chance. <laughs> not looking good. I mean, we could all take uh, a note from Kirill Kaprizov, who notably said in through a translator because you know he doesn't speak to us in English uh that he is pissed about the way that the Minnesota Wild have been playing goes out scores two goals against the Boston Bruins to back up that swag I mean you gotta love the swag that mm-hmm. Kirill Kaprizov continues to bring right I mean there are times when it's you don't want to say concerning because he's still Kirill but mm-hmm. it's like look at the beginning of the season when he's not scoring mm-hmm. and I mean dude's dude's still on pace for 45 goals this year yeah, he's uh, slowly creeping up on on possibly it would be probably tough at this point, but but possibly breaking that single season record for points uh, for the Minnesota Wild. I uh, he's he's got a couple guys to pass before he gets there, but I, I'll, he'll probably pass a few more for sure by the time the season is over. Well, whether or not he'll get that top spot is to be determined. But I just I wanted to talk about this because it's something that. I don't really know if we've seen this out of a wild player before here in Minnesota, where you, you know, you'll have guys come out and say, Hey, I didn't play well. You know, we've seen guys fall on the sword before and take the blame and and say, we have to be better. We have to do this, or I have to be better. I have to do this. Mm -hmm. But this is one of the first times where I've really seen a player say, I'm pissed. Literally I'm pissed. We're losing games. And then in the next day, go out and score two goals and and help your team win a game against a team who, who really wanted to play in your face hockey, who wanted to get in your head, the wild state collected, they played their game. They battled back. You know, they, they gave in to some of the, 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 the mind games that the Boston Bruins were trying to play. But at the end of the day, they went out and got the win. And, and a big reason for that was two goals by Kirill Kaprizov. And that's what you need from especially your star players, but just in general on your team, you need guys who are going to walk the walk. It's, it's easy, quote unquote, easy to go into an interview or a press conference and say, Hey, we need to be better. We need to do this. We need guys are going to say that, you know, until the end of time, but to actually then go out and do those things and, and make that change and try to turn the game around that's a lot harder to do because even if you want to do it, I mean, there's a lot of guys I'm sure would love to go say, Hey, we played bad and then go score two goals the next game. Right. Not everyone can do that. And so the fact that we have a guy now on the Minnesota wild who can walk the walk is incredible. And that's the kind of guy that you're going to need leading the way because playoffs are tough. You're going to face adversity again before the season is over. You will lose games again before the season is over. And this is the time of year where you need quick bounce back. You need quick response. You need quick turnaround. Um, and, and so I was very impressed with, with Kirill Kaprizov's response uh, uh, in the game because it's something we haven't really seen before. And it's something we're going to need more of before the season is over. Right. Like I go back to Matt Zuccarello saying it post uh, winter classic game when they were on a four game losing streak. And that felt like a losing streak. Like, right? Like that was just a a little blip compared to now where the struggles are real and Mm -hmm. it's hard to get. I mean, yes, you have the win against Boston, not going to get any easier the rest of the season. (laughs) Like there are all going to be games like that because everyone's playing a little bit of desperate hockey, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's playoff type atmosphere, not to say that like everyone else is like, Oh, this is fine that we're losing or, Oh, this is fine that we're struggling. But yeah, you're right. Like it goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the year. Kirill is the superstar. You Mm -hmm. need to be able to play like a superstar, especially now, right? Like Connor McDavid is playing like a superstar. Your boy, Austin Matthews playing Mm -hmm. like a superstar. Kirill Kaprizov needs to play like a superstar. Um, especially when goals are going to be hard to come by now. Right. We we talked about it last week, like playoff hockey, you're not scoring six, seven goals (laughs) every night. Let's get the Florida Panthers or whatever. Right. Like it just, you're not going to be able to do that. And I think Kirill taking advantage of those moments when he can score one, two, three, Mm -hmm. even, I mean, Hattie watched the other night. Right. So I think, yeah, him being that voice, that vocal leader, because I know he speaks English better than he tells us (laughs) uh, in the locker room. I think it is, it's critical. I mean, you got to have that swag. Alexis, I know you're on team Timberwolves as of late, like bring that ant swag, swag, bring that Mm -hmm. cat swag, get on Kaprizov level swag. 
And the fact that he's, you know, one of the younger guys in the room, one of the guys who, you know, he hasn't been on this team forever. The fact that you've got somebody like that stepping up is huge as well. You know, you expect the captains mm -hmm. to step up and do that stuff. You expect the veterans to step up and do that stuff. But to have a young guy in the room like Kirill Kaprizov, who has only been here for a couple seasons, who's, who's still f making his way here in the NHL, trying to pave his path and make his legacy, to have him be the guy that steps up, that as well is just such an important piece of it. And, and it really helps lead the way for some of the other young guys in the room who are who maybe question if they have that capability to do that and, and to to be an example of how you do that from Kirill Kaprizov that's one of the best guys you can look up to in the room so I I, exactly. I love it we t hashtag team swag get that swag out be as swaggy as you can be and go get the job done so kudos to Kirill Kaprizov keep it up swaggy swag speaking of <laughs> swag uh better edge b-e-t-t-r edge.com Huge swag always beat the Butte on Tuesday against me and Avery when she wants to play uh, Thursday <laughs> against Alexis. Also, they are giving away tickets to the final four. So be sure to check them out. We'd love those guys. They're awesome because it's yeah. March Madness in uh in the basketball there go houston that's who i selected that's who i picked oh my Did god you? yeah no Stop. way i like wow. it wow who Love do you have Chris. them beating i don't even remember it's all a blur i all i know is i got houston winning it all baby i got I houston kansas? winning it all is oh that, no kansas i got kansas? kansas yeah no they could okay kansas i think that's dropping. why i have, have them beating okay yeah. all right no and then got my iowa state cyclones going to the elite eight wow okay. let's go yeah okay. that was a terrible decision i i mean i just literally Picking with your darts. heart i respect it you know you gotta once in a while i mean <laughs> we can all cheer that i was done so that's awesome yeah i did pick Richmond to beat them i gotta mm. myself up nice for that one very proud avery didn't like it avery we're gonna an, take avery's an iowa fan <laughs> avery's an iowa fan apparently we'll have to have a discussion with her on that we're gonna take a quick break when we come back ryan carter it's hockey season, baby, and the best way to head into a new season is to be fully equipped with all the merch you need to cheer on your favorite teams. Oh, and some Bardown Beauties merch too, right? Right. We've got you covered. Literally, head over to teespring.com where you can find all kinds of custom design, Bardown Beauties apparel, plus so much more. This is Ryan Carter, everybody. Ryan Carter is joining us now. Talk a little hockey, talk a little, I don't know, what do you want about? Who do I yeah. want to? Yeah. First of all, I want to talk about the countdown to get started. 30 second countdown. <laughs> yes. A lot of emotions there. I was nervous, nervous then excited, <laughs> then bored. So that's that's a long that's countdown. That's a roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. And then roller it looked like coaster. the hand is getting ready for, like, he was getting ready to give us the five countdown, <laughs> yeah. but he didn't want to get too tired. Yeah. So he got it warmed up and three, two, hit the exactly button start. So happened. the countdown, um, that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. Sorry if we stressed you out there. That I, you know, producer Fred, he's yeah, great. But should we fire him? He can. We can fire him. Thirty second countdown. I just mm -hmm. didn't know how to handle it. I was, so what do you? What do we? Yeah, Fred, Fred. Fred wants to give time to people to jump on. Um, but we're also we're always open to ideas. So, yep. Cards, what do you think we should change the countdown to? Well, if you change the countdown to like five seconds, you'd have twenty five more seconds to wait for people to get on. <laughs> oh, now that's good thinking. Okay. Is five I seconds mean, enough for you to go through the emotions of preparing to speak? I don't like the you emotions. Just, you just I want to jump in. Temporary paralysis right about two seconds before I before the, the camera turns on. It's exactly <laughs> So at least have the countdown like fake me out. How okay. many seconds do you get on Bally's? I don't, I don't get a countdown. You don't. They're just like, all right, you're on camera. It's talk. Whenever, yeah, it's like whenever like they throw it to you. Amazing. Okay, we're done talking. Your turn. Okay. And it's like, okay, here we are. And then the red light goes your on. Your switch then, goes on. Yeah, yeah. And then the paralysis hits. Yep. I think it's perfect. How are you liking uh, working in Bali? You're doing communications and media stuff. You're you're a media man. You got the, you have the personality for it. I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how am I liking it? It's yeah. great. It's not like playing, though. I wish I was playing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you watch the state high school tournament. I, I wish I was 17 years old. But you played too, for White Bear, so you wouldn't have made it. Two here, well, we so. wow, I didn't make it. That's ruthless. I didn't make it, but we didn't yeah. make it to Saturday. You never do, right? That's a, <laughs> that's a, you can no, leave now like if you want, Carter. She's kind of mean sometimes. It's like hey, not a mean I didn't make it either. It's fine, whatever. No, I know. You got to let the little brothers uh, take their <laughs> wow. shots when they can. <laughs> oh, wow. Good point. Hey, you know, I, I, is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The little side of the lake over there? The yeah. better side of the lake. I think I've heard of it, but I don't know. Never been. Yeah. It's it's a good spot. I do want to talk. For those of you that don't travel outside the West Metro. A lot of people. Yeah. There's this east side of town and there, there's a decent sized lake called white bear lake and white bear dominates that lake but there's a little yes. corner that's called matamita and that's yeah. where jesse's from it's a lot of beef nice. from that yeah. a lot of yeah just happy to educate all you west siders but 
<laughs> that there is an east side of there town, there is an east side it's it's yeah. fantastic yeah. i want to talk white bear hill murray rivalry though because that is the best like i it's everybody loves it go to the coliseum r.i.p right but that was the best night of hockey I was watching hill murray white bear square off to get to state no question yeah and it's kind of fun you get a chance to play in that rivalry but you're sometimes playing against some of like your your childhood line mates and yes, stuff too so you yes. get you get some of the good kids that you know that go to the private school a little bit more jam there but it seemed well and it still does seem this way that it always comes down to white bear hill murray you play each other twice during the regular season that really sets the tone for the one game that you really care about and that's the section <laughs> final mm -hmm. i was fortunate enough to have that one be at the coliseum which was a lot of fun i love the big venue uh, I, aldrich you know it's great that's where we played our regular season games against hill mm -hmm. um but it's just kind of it is a little bit sad that the Coliseum got retired. I think that yes. that game needs a bigger ring. It totally it sells it sells out like that. Well, like stand, yeah, you know? standing room only. Yeah, yeah. Dangerous people sitting in the like <laughs> in the stairwells. You yeah, know? but right? um, yeah, just. But maybe that's what we got to do with all the money that the Bar Down Beauties make is just donate it yeah, to a new yeah, ring right. you know what, for I'm, that section final game. I am on board with that. I feel we like Mata Mita, I, yeah, yeah. Mata Mita, I could pitch in on that maybe too. They don't have their own rink either. No, bummer. Mm -hmm. I know. Oh, whose do they use? They use Stillwaters. And? St. Croix. And, oh, they do use White Bears. <laughs> oh, I was just checking. <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, that's it for this interview. We're done. We're done. Take it's it kind of like a hand-me-down too because Mata Mita like, is White Bear's little brother. <laughs> Because it's the one rink that if White Bear was going to give one away, it'd be that one. Like the <laughs> yeah. county rink, so cold in there. Like so cool. Benches, Awful. stink, locker rooms, tight. Uh, you, you know what, little bro? Oh, yeah, you can have this one. <laughs> of course. Um, you know, we talked about the state tournament here. I think you and Jesse have had enough of each other mm -hmm. for the rest of this interview. <laughs> um, but let's talk Minnesota Wild uh, for a second. We just had Matt Dumba on before you. So tough act to follow, Cards. Tough act. Um, Minnesota Wild or Matt Dumba? Uh, it, yes. <laughs> the entire team was here. Um, the, uh, and he talked about this homestand coming up and they got to get some points they, he said the crowd and the team is going to be ready to go for tomorrow with Miko's big day. Do you think the wild are going to find a way to get things? They've started, they've started to start playing a little bit better here. Started with the Rangers game. Um, but do you think this homestand we're going to see the Minnesota wild we saw for most of this season? I think so. I don't think guys like to admit it. Coaches don't want to admit it because you don't want to probably, um, give light to the fact that the guys get tired a little bit and that the schedule can be hard and not making excuses. But I think you look at the play, you look at the fact that the wild have played more road games than any other team, a uh, fewest number of home games. It was kind of a grind. The, the first 55 games and specifically probably the last 20 mm -hmm. and the way they had to go through Canada, bouncing back and forth that was added in there. So you, you factor in the mental fatigue of thinking that you're going to spend a week or two on the beach in Kabul. Instead, you're going <laughs> east and west, back and forth through Canada. That's not a shot at Canada. Oh, it's no Kabul, though. No Kabul. No, Kabul. <laughs> no, not in February, right? So uh, I, I do think that that has played a, a big part in it. And I think if you look at the performance of some of the guys, it is it is probably the more veteran guys that have worn down a little bit and maybe mm -hmm. looking a little bit fatigued. So the, the young guys. And now we'll start to see, too, some of these young guys, Boldy, he's got 25 games. Yeah. You when know, you think about it, that's that's like 80% of a college season. Right. You know, and uh, they're going to have some tough games, and they're going to be every other night. But I do think, like, for me, there's there's no stress. The Wild are a good team. They've proved it. You, I go back to the Vegas series last year. Yeah. This is a younger, faster, more skilled, uh, and I would say explosive offensively for sure, team mm -hmm. than that was that played Vegas last year, took them to seven games. So, that team, I think there's no question about it. They've just got to find a way to make the playoffs, which I don't think anybody's really all that concerned about. No. There's a couple teams coming within the Central, but I think if, if the Wild fall out of one of the top three, I think the Central ends up getting five out of the West into the playoffs, and mm -hmm. as long as the Wild are in it, they'll find that game that they had to bring Vegas to seven games. And uh, again, it's a it's a younger, faster, more mm -hmm. skilled team, so I, I like right. their chances. You talked about the fatigue, and, and Gorgie was on with us this morning, and he actually credited a conversation he heard you and Parrish having about the grind of the season and how it's between about 40, game 40 and game 60, that it's just really, really hard to to handle for a lot of players, right? It just kind of catches up with you a little bit. Dumba did let everybody know that uh, they're past they're that. past it. They're yep. past it. He's not worried about it. He's, yeah. he's like, we're past it. It's fine. I think they are past it. Yeah. And honestly, it goes this way, and it did for me. The first 20 games, you're excited. You're in great shape. you still got your tan, vitamin <laughs> D. Everything's going well, right? Yeah. And you're figuring yourselves out. 
game 20, you kind of learn what you are. Mm-hmm. And you know, you get the coach, you get your line mates, you understand the chemistry, and now you're just kind of sharpening each other. Right. Right. And then now you get to game 40, and it's like the all-star break. You're through the holidays, and you're like, okay, what's the next What's the next thing to look forward to? And it's kind of the trade deadline. So 40 to 60, you're kind of like, all right, Groundhog Day. Like, you're tired of the snow. Mm-hmm. You're tired of the grind. You're tired of going back and forth <laughs> in Canada. Right. Mm-hmm. And you're ready for game 60 and the trade deadline and to see who your team is and who you're going to battle with and make that final run to the playoffs. Cause uh, you know, the guys, they want to be good for 80 games, but in all honesty, they want to be the best game one of the playoffs mm-hmm. and try to ride that out. Right. Um, so it, it's kind of a buildup for that and the mental side of it wears them down. But yeah, I think 40 to 60 for me was, was like the mental challenge. And that's where you really, you really learn, like I, I've got to be a pro here mm-hmm. and how do I get better? And it's, you got to eat right. You got to stick with it and find that mental strength to, to find consistency. Well, and given the schedule coming up to it is so condensed. It is absolutely insane right now through this month. How do you think they're going to kind of handle that challenge in front of them? I mean, you're going to get some injuries. I cannot see how you're going to get completely healthy out of that. I mean, what do you think that looks like? And then back at the goaltending, too. How do you handle Cam and Capo and, you know, try to get one of them in a good rhythm? I think the schedule actually will play into the hands of the wild. Again, looking at recent history, when the Wild had their return to play, it was a game every other day. And the way Everson handled the schedule, mm-hmm. it was game, optional skater, day off, mm-hmm. morning skate, go. So the guys are just into games. Yeah. And I asked a few what they thought about that. And were you tired? Is it mentally, you know, tough? And they're like, no, what's actually great about it is, like, you have a bad one. You know you only got to wait, like, 36 hours before you get another <laughs> crack at it, right? Yeah. So you yeah. kind of just get into this game mode, and it's you're up. And then you're, you're slightly down, you're relaxed, you're up again. So I think the cadence is right, but and, and I think they can handle that workload, no question about it. But yeah, now injuries, if they creep in and then all yeah. of a sudden you're depleted. And, you know, I, I think you look at the rough patch and, and what that did for the Wild, too. It forced them to have to play some of their stars. Like they had big minutes, Kirill mm-hmm. Kaprizov. If you look at the game logs, he's logging more minutes now than he had at any other mm-hmm. point. It's because they're searching for it. They're trying it. I thought that was one thing the Wild did really early on in the years. They're able to just roll four and they're fresh and they stayed healthy and they got on top of injuries. Guys would be out one, two games and their injuries got cleaned up and it didn't turn into a a two to four week kind of thing. Right. So uh, we'll see if they can find their groove again. So when they get these bumps and bruises, which they inevitably will, they can just take a day or two and nip it in the bud before it turns into something a little more serious. Fair. Where are the bar down beauties? Ryan Carter joining us now. Does anybody have any questions for Ryan Carter? Anybody My dad to? does. He says it's no. the best question of all time, so, so I don't know. Prepare, prepare yourself, yourself. Cards. You know, Okay. <laughs> so you're prepared for this question? I don't know what it is. Did you tee him up? So Hi, excited. Ryan. Nice to meet you again. <laughs> Actually, we met a couple years ago at Children's Hospital. Sure. Remember oh, yeah, that? that was... Yeah, with Tom Reed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, were, you, I think you were on my daughter Sonia's team, and you, Tom and Alexis were a team. But uh, I know you had quite the career, uh, both from high school up to NHL, and you had a, probably a lot of special moments in NHL. But the one moment that I want to find out from you uh, is, what was your favorite part of fighting Marcus Foligno? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good the, one. It's a good one. I'll give you that. I'll give you that, buddy. <laughs> Boy, wow, good question. My favorite part. <laughs> when it was over. <laughs> <laughs> and if I could remember it. Uh, no, but I would say the I would say the most funny part was so his dad was my coach. So his dad's the assistant coach, and he runs the penalty kill. So I mean, I was with him a lot. And I'm going in. I got a little cut. I, well, it wasn't little, but I got cut right here, too. And I'm, in, I'm getting repaired. And his dad comes in after the period, all dejected, kind of. And he's like, hey, why, why didn't you tell me you were going to fight Marcus? And I was like, what do you mean, why didn't I tell you? Like, you, you want me to just hit the pause button and come tell you? Like, what do you mean? He goes, if you'd have just told me, I would have told you not to do it. It's really tough, Ryan. And I was like, hey, so like, you automatically, like, wait, what are you actually saying? Like, you don't think I'm tough? Like, that was a, he had no confidence wait, in you. Like, what he was telling you, right? There's no chance? Like, coach, I get it, you're his dad. Come on, man. So not only did I get my butt kicked, uh, your own coach was like, I told like, you not to. He's, he's ah, not. Yeah. Fine, I like it. Wish you just would have told me that you're going to fight him. I would have told you not to. <laughs> Do you have a fight that stands out in your career? One where like you think you got the, the best of them or maybe like you got the last laugh or somebody you thought you might not be able to get the best of and you did? Obviously not Marcus, but somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there are some. I mean, yeah, you win some, you lose some right. when it comes yeah. to fighting. Um, but you know, there's there's a couple. Uh, but what I will say is that like fighting actually sucked. If I walked you through <laughs> my fight journey, it sucks. I mean, walk us through it. Yeah. It, it sucks. You know. <laughs> so 
I you tell me you don't have fun. I mean, what's the worst there? part? Yeah, getting hit or getting like it's your knuckles. This I mean, is the it's human that? side of it, and I do say this too that we're kind of idiots because every other professional like fighting, <laughs> like boxers wear gloves. Yeah. yeah. Like they're professional fighters actually. Like they fight. Yeah. And they wear gloves. Mm -hmm. You look at the MMA guys; they at least have some gloves on. Like everybody yep. wears gloves, and then you get these hockey idiots that say, "Hey, we actually have gloves on, but let's yeah. take them off." <laughs> And then and you know in what? Cold environment. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> and then you know what? Let's wear helmets. So let's punch each other's helmet. <laughs> so like your hands hurt. That was the worst part. Your hands hurt. And I go great, sweet. I gotta punch him in the head <laughs> or his helmet. Uh, no, but so that part sucks too. You people gotta put should, on the foil. People should understand that. That well, really sucks. Yeah. Um, you like but that one? now the the human side of it is. I was actually fairly tough in junior hockey. You go to college, you put the cage back on, you don't fight mm -hmm. at all, then into the American League. And uh, I won a couple of fights again, get to the NHL. And, and now I'm a, an American kid, Minnesota, and we don't we don't really fight. Like, it's, you know, yeah. the Canadian yeah. kids play junior at 16, and they know what they're <laughs> yeah. doing at by 17 or 18, and yeah. they've got a couple of fights under their belt. And I really didn't know that much. Nobody ever coached me. It's my first ever Sanger fight. Sanger never uh, taught you how to fight. I had Billy Butts, who would have taught me to fight, but it wasn't part of the game. Uh, but, yeah, so my first fight, I go down to the Buck Bowl in Des Moines, I believe it was, or maybe it was the Cedar Rapids tournament, and my coach is just like, hey, there's a ton of college scouts here, and they love toughness and fighting. So it wouldn't be a good or a bad idea if you if you get into a you know a little tussle to, to finish it off. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> First kid, first kid that says anything to me, I fight him. He just says hi. Boom, done. Yeah, and I think he was the same. Neither one of us had any clue what we were doing. We both just grab on and just start punching, and we smoke each other. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I, I like. I remember hitting his face like hard so many times, and I was like. Like, am I hitting his shoulder pads or his face? Like, what is this feeling? And it was face. That's what I was like, I got to see. I have to see. So I look up and rough, terrible timing. Terrible. Right over my elbow comes a punch, too. It's like, oh, that's a terrible idea. I right on the nose. Uh, fight ends. I go to the box, and that never happened before. Like, you're learning what the emotions and what the feelings are like. I look at my hand, and I'd, I'd split my finger Ugh. on my ring finger knuckle. I had knocked all his teeth out. <laughs> And split my finger on it. So that's the scar. And, and cut the tendon of my right hand. Oh my ring gosh! Finger. So then I'm trying to move my so finger. This is my first fight ever. This is my first ever fight. <laughs> I'm trying to move my ring finger, and it looks like a little, you know, what a wax worm looks like. The yeah. Oh, thing. Ew. I'm trying to move it, and it's like it's like wiggling around <laughs> like a wax worm. So I was like, hey, guy, it's a guy in the box. Uh, what do you think about this? <laughs> hey, can you stitch me up right here? Yeah. What do you think? He's like, you're gonna have to go see somebody. About that. <laughs> So the poor pedal guy. No, but I get I get like yeah, go back. driven over to the hospital because apparently if you if you punch somebody in the mouth with a bare hand, you take your glove off. There's a lot of bacteria in Who there, thought? and then you have to go get it all cleaned out. Mm. Then I had surgery a couple of days later. That's junior hockey, though. I could continue on. That story goes on that's, for a while. Well, I mean, keep going. I, now I'm, uh, I'm in. The bus had to wait for me for a long time, so that sucked, too. I was like, all the attention was on me after I always that. forget about the buses at the at the lower levels there where everything's yeah. a bus trip. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, man, that's – well, I remember when we had Marco Rossi on, he was talking about the AHL, and he's like, it's a tough league because everybody just wants to hurt you. Like, everyone yeah. – because you're competing so hard to impress people, right? And he's like, you really have to have your head on a swivel because well, – He's it's, getting it's, beat up. He's getting beat yeah. up. Good. Well, I mean, would you say that's true that in the AHL, I mean, there's there's some guys out there who it, it's different than the NHL in that sense? Yeah. If Marco was here, I'd say you should have played 10 years ago or even more. <laughs> if, you think, if you think the American League is scary right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Eesh. Back when uh, Karts is getting his hand cut on teeth in the in well, a fight. I'll tell, I'll tell Do you. you have all your You have all your teeth. No. Yeah? No. no? I had him for like the first nine years. Then Nino Nino Rider shut a puck off the post and hit me in the mouth for a rebound. <laughs> that was a good run. Nine years is pretty good. That's a good run. <laughs> Sucked. Uh, but no, so then my first AHL game, I, I'm i playing between Sean Thornton. You remember who that is? Yep. And Trevor Gillies. Oh, yeah. Okay. So sure. two super tough guys. Yep. Like American League's like two of the toughest that played in the American League. Yeah. And they're like, and I was, again, pretty naive. They're like, hey, just so you know, do whatever you want tonight. Nobody's going to say a word to you. I didn't quite understand what that meant. <laughs> but he's like, just you're free. Do whatever you want. So I go out and I think I run the goalie like first, first period. And I skate 
back to the bench, untouched, right past their bench. Nobody says a word to me. And I was like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm sitting there talking to these guys like, hey, they didn't say a word to me. I just ran that goal through the wall. They're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> Good job. That's what we told yeah. you to do. <laughs> so you talk about fear. There was guys like like Thornton yeah. and Gillies back in the day. I don't think I don't think there's as many around in the American League now yeah. as, as there was then. But, or in the NHL. Really. I mean, I mean, it's, it's kind of a different. dying medium, yeah. right? I mean, it seems like it's just you need to have the skill set and the speed is there. And Because now then you add the el- extra element of potential for high injury, right? I mean, if you're going to try to crush a guy while he's going that fast, there's that to be considered. It does seem like it's very different today than it than it was even five years ago. Yeah, it's different, but the game is different too. Like, there's, right. there's no heavyweights. You know, the fourth line used to be veteran guys that mm-hmm. can check and then, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the big tough guy, right? Yeah. And I think you see the give take. Look at the wild penalty kill right now. There isn't like the What's, veteran. What penalty not, kill? Let's not look at the wild penalty <laughs> but, but kill, right? Some of that is. That's the give take, right? Yeah, Scoring yeah. is up in the NHL. It, yeah. you've, you've taken away, and just look at the age of the wild fourth line. Mm-hmm. You've taken away the veteran guys that used to play third and fourth line roles, uh, maybe a half a step slower, but were committed to a style of play, would play a system, good at checking, you know played defensively sound their whole goal was i don't care what happens tonight i'm just not getting scored on yeah right no that's right? fair now look at the wild fourth line three rookies mm-hmm. right well sturm's no longer a rookie but yeah, you've got right. to him you've got doer and then you know everyone's you know buke says there now but it's young guys and they don't check as well because they have things to learn but just a completely different style and philosophy than there was you know 10 15 years ago you know everyone loves the high scoring offense that the minnesota wild has created this year they're scoring six goals seven goals five goals that's not going to happen come playoff time right it's going to be that tight checking how tight how much tighter does the defense need to really be because we're seeing some cracks right now i think um you know just in order to prepare for the playoffs knowing that their their offense isn't going to be able to soar like they had uh, done at the beginning of the year i think you can look at that two ways one you can can say the wild need to tighten things up but at the same time the other club's going to end up managing that puck a little bit better too so mm-hmm. there's a lot of a lot of skilled plays that that take some significant risk that guys will no longer be trying or attempting right like that's right. what i mean with mm-hmm. the the veteran third and fourth line guys like they sure. understand a role like hey i'm not crossing the blue line and trying to make this play mm-hmm. you know during the regular season that might turn into a goal against but in the playoffs when it really matters and you know and you can calculate the risk on the fly like mm-hmm. this is not a great idea not doing it <laughs> put it in the corner let's go try another way right yeah uh, that i think you'll see more of that but there's no question the game changes a little bit I think the Wild are actually suited for it. If you if you ask around the league, and it's probably the best the best way to find out how a club is playing or what their reputation is, the Wild are hard to play against. Yeah. They're heavy. They're kind of mean. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't cheat often. So that lately they've been giving up more odd man rushes. But you're really going to have to work for your chances. You're going to have to work for the ugly ones. Uh, and at the same time, they just keep coming. So mm-hmm. uh, as long as they continue to sharpen that knife a little bit, they'll be just fine. Uh, and defensively, again, you go back. I go back to that Vegas series. They can shut down a Vegas team that has Mark Stone and mm-hmm. and Pacioretty and those guys, and and find a way to grind that out. They'll they'll be good in time. It's just uh, how long until they're fully sharp. Fully well, sharp. Um, you know, we talked to Russo earlier, and he was talking about the Preds and the Blues as two teams that have been really tough for the Wild to play against recently. Actually, my dad said this the other night too. So shout out to my dad for that. Jim Pearson, um, what's up? <laughs> But who would you say at this point in time, I, I know we're still a ways away from the playoffs in a certain sense, but also getting closer. Who would be one team who, with the Wilds' makeup, you think would be one of the toughest or worst matchups for the Wild to have in the first round of the playoffs at this point in time, looking at everybody that they could possibly be matched up against? Who do you not want to see in that first round? Yeah, slippery slope. I don't ever like to guess that stuff because yeah. you don't want to set yourself up, right? But uh, <laughs> And so much can change still. Yeah, yeah. but I think you look at, Calgary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jess, Jesse's afraid of them too. Yeah. Was, yeah, I, it's not that I would be afraid of them, uh, yeah, it, but it, it didn't go well for the wild, Yeah, you know, and, and I would say that Calgary maybe got into the heads of the wild a little bit because all of a sudden the narrative out of that, that two game set was, wow, they really pushed the wild around mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the wild rebounded by trying to push back. And it just, it got them off their game. What, what Calgary was able to do was get the Minnesota wild to play Calgary hockey and not the other way around. Right. If that makes sense. Um, but you look at that too. I, I don't know. Calgary was playing their best hockey of the season at mm-hmm. that time. They had mm-hmm. won ten or eleven in a row. Yeah. And the Wild were playing their worst hockey at yeah, the right. time. Right. They, yeah. they had been on a skid. So I'm not panicking too much. But I do think that the the Wild are. I think they're a better team against 
for example, the East. Well, mm -hmm. until last night, they were 10 and 0 against the Metro Division. Mm -hmm. They were like 15, 5, 16, 5 and 1 versus the East in general. Mm -hmm. East is more high flyer skill team. Yeah. They're a little bit more disciplined and they can shut you down in that sense. So, I, I, I as dumb as this might sound, I think it'd be great for the Wild to play a team like Colorado because sure. they can go surprise them, shut sure. them down. Yeah. And Colorado's going to get frustrated and they'll maybe eventually turn the puck over and then that's how you get your chances and you beat them in that sense. But mm -hmm. yeah, maybe the most. The grind teams are the ones that that I would be yeah, well. and that's kind of what it was with Calgary for me because it's like they they're physical too, like yeah. just like St. Louis is, right? I mean, I think that's always kind of like I just saw at least in those two games, right? I'm taking that two sets because unfortunately I don't pay as much attention to Calgary outside of when they're playing the Wild, right? But I just think they have some of that, and Markstrom was playing really well too. Like mm -hmm. he's a, he's a good goaltender. I really like him. So that's you know scared, yeah, not quite, but I just think it'd be it'd be a tough it'd be a tough matchup. But I look at Calgary, and again, just to fight that narrative that Calgary was big and tough and super physical. Yeah, I don't think they ran the Wild through the building. No. They just were like a heavier team. So mm -hmm. when it came down to a 50-50 battle, you know they had a couple more pounds, and they were able to turn yeah. it into a 55-45 battle, right? And that right. was kind of the difference in the end. They won them, but they're mm -hmm. they're not like intimidating scary like mm -hmm. american league hockey scary, like, <laughs> according like, to marco like, like, or to go yeah. 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 but uh they're, they're just a little heavier yeah i love it again we are the bar down beauties ryan carter joining us right now anybody have any questions for ryan carter don't all raise your hands at once don't all raise your hands at once he's not intimidating at all what's your what's your favorite spot to fish I know it's not white bear. <laughs> I was gonna say, is that for real? Yeah, is it really white bear? I feel like that was a test. Are you testing no. me? No, it's white what kind bear's of fisherman favorite. tells his favorite spot to fish? Um, I'm not gonna walk Keith into that Ballard trap. These us. are my spots. I was, I was gonna say, Jesse, these are my spots. Jesse like, has tried this with so many guests. They're so like, I'm not guests. telling you, and she's like, tell me. <laughs> yeah, Saylock told me his. No. Yeah. No, that's like babysitters. You don't share them. Oh. Okay. What? Okay. What are? Yeah, that's what? my baby. <laughs> Come on. What's your favorite fish to fish for? Do you prefer ice fishing or summer fishing or both? You like them both? You know what? I always like this is probably my journey with fishing is I used to chase like largemouth bass because they were easy and I wanted the action. Yeah. And then I got into walleye fishing and I so see good. those pan fishermen over there chasing all the sunfish and the crap. He's like, look at those nerds. <laughs> Losers. Bored. Bored. I never want to be that guy. <laughs> and you're that guy. Now, no, I'm that guy. I'm that guy. crappie fishing. All the tables like, turn. I'm never going to be like my dad. Like, he just wants to go crappie fishing. <laughs> I'm a walleye fisherman. That's me now. Yeah. yeah, you're a walleye. Yeah, Rainy Lake. Okay. Yep. So you just like to go. You you don't like. To I like chase to fish for what I like to eat. Like I like to eat my walleye. Like that's my favorite fish. Yeah. Yeah. So. You don't find the fish. You yeah. You just kind of go. You know where they're gonna be, and then you yeah. just go there. They're on the Canadian side of Rainy of Lake too, by the way. Yeah. That's where they are. So, so you haven't fished in a couple of years because you haven't been able to get there. Nope. Exactly. Well, see. So now you say you're a fisherman, and I just busted it. You're not. <laughs> That, Why are you here? Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. You, you two got some unresolved beef that we you do. came into this podcast. Actually, my language, I just chirp back and forth <laughs> yeah. all the time. This is exactly what it's like. I have no Morgan take skates. on fishing, so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, yeah you gotta she, look for we should take her out fishing yeah. sometime. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd have a better chance at maybe fishing with carts than trying to play hockey against carts because I will never you, play hockey with you. Yeah, again. that was I. I literally <laughs> felt like an orange cone out there, and you were using me for drills on the ice. That's what it felt like, to be honest. <laughs> That's it. That is what happened. Uh, Rebuttal? No. I'm, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say this. <laughs> I don't think that's because I was overly skilled or a great player. <laughs> that's a good I mean, point. I, I, mean, I don't think this is a compliment for me. <laughs> it's more of a diss my way, right? That's, that's, I, there, yeah. At one point, I was standing in uh, front of the net, and I had my skates just far enough apart for carts to use them as figure eights to move the puck around. And no matter what I did, I could not get my stick <laughs> on the puck. I was like, am, am I really this bad? Like, it was one of those moments where you I'm like... talk about bad. Like, I, I, you, said, like you scored, all right? So yeah, if you guys it, have not seen yet... On our YouTube channel, we played a little hockey against the On the Bench Boys and Ryan Carter because we thought that was a good idea. Alexis yeah, and I have never played was... hockey before. I can barely skate. So I'm out there focusing on just skating, thinking that these guys are going to like go easy on us, give us the puck. No, no, they didn't do that at all. And then I get overly competitive because yeah. I don't like to lose. Again, never had played hockey before. I'm trying to actually play hockey against yeah. Ryan Carter here. And he just dipsy doodles around me, fall down on the ice. It's just you know those memes on the internet where it's like a scratch freeze frame. You're probably wondering how I got here. That's how I felt every single yes. moment. Carts was near me when we were playing hockey because I'm like, yep. I know I and I could tell sometimes you were like being nice and you're like, I'm gonna slow down a little bit yeah. and like let her get to totally. the I'm like, that's really nice of you, Carts. I appreciate that. I can look kind of cool for a second now. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not true. I felt old. I was pulling my groin. A little bit. <laughs>
It was no. cold. It was, it was a cold day. Whole day. The on the bench boys were were saying that they were like really they cold. Were I mean, you guys are Canadians, and they this were is, I mean, it was chilly, but they were they they were happy they to get back whining. inside. What do you think? Was that was that cold? Well, I do think Canadians are soft. So oh, that, that's okay, true. shots that's fired. True. I agree and, with that. And we should know. Didn't you go? Uh, didn't you go bar down on a? Uh, high school youth goalie out there too or weren't you just peppering some goalie poor kid well, I in couldn't, net I couldn't after score our game like a regular shootout so then i just went straight slappers and i think i went like <laughs> six in a row you just kept going further and back and I'm like, hey, buddy, or, can you back up a little or, he's or, pushing or, the net back yeah, 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 I'm done. I quit. he got as small as he could oh that poor but that they the the mistake you guys made was was not showing up it was not why I'm playing it was like like drafting teams, you guys should have negotiated a little bit better. Yeah, how was it three on two? Like, <laughs> like, you guys not only <laughs> at negotiating and picking the teams. Yeah. That's so true. We, we, yeah, really, we need to reconvene, rethink this out. I think we had no idea what was going to happen out there. Yeah, we just showed up. They're like, you got your skates? We're like, yeah, we're like, cool. Oh, yeah, sure. You put the Stanley Cup winner on the team as the two guys who can skate and put me and Jesse, who are just struggling, on one team. That was a real good idea. I was wearing using a wooden stick I had found on the side of the road yeah. with a What was that? It was the wrong curve. <laughs> Too. Wrong curve, left-handed stick. <laughs> Does that make more Multiple. sense, Carso? Yeah. Yeah. No, it would have helped uh, if I had a right stick. Yeah. That would have been better. It makes perfect sense. But, uh, <laughs> again, talking about competitive, it wasn't going to be like, let's make this fair. I, w- I want to win, too. <laughs> right? And it was locked up oh, yeah, before we, we it started. Got that. Like, <laughs> we got that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We figured that out real fast. I went <laughs> home. I went. I went home, and I was, like, so embarrassed. Like, my husband's like, it's fine. I'm like, no. It just, I was so, I'm so bad because. I, no, you know, yeah, it's I'm, like I'm competitive. We're like, oh, I we're filming like content. This will be fun. It'll be lighthearted. And then it's like Karts is like oh. going full speed, <laughs> and the on the bench boys are blasting, you know, slap shots from mid ice. I thought we're just gonna be drinking beer on the ice. Yeah, this was not the case. So yeah. were you like super critical of me after that? Were you like watching every way like I eat that I, snack? Oh, I or ground I took a sip film. Of I ground like, film. Like, I eat like an, yep. like an idiot. <laughs> just finding something yeah, to hate just, you for. Just something to get back at me with. No. No, yeah. I had nothing. I really had nothing. Nicer than I am. Yeah. <laughs> For now, we'll see. I'm working on it. Still yeah. working on it. I think it's the nicest time. thing you did to me that day was you refilled my wine glass at post game, and I was like, okay, all, all the all the times yeah. I got burned out on the ice, at least carts came out here and, and you know poured me a drink when all was said and done. So that was uh, that made up for you uh, just completely dominating on the ice. Yeah. Cheers. cheers. Toast, <laughs> toast to the championship. To, to, toast oh. to the well, championship. we'll get a rematch on the books again. Yeah. And this is Ryan Carter. Ryan, thanks so much for swinging through. Where's your daughter? How'd you find her yet? Uh, she's she's ripping around here nice. somewhere. I see her. <laughs> I found her. Is she here? Yep. Yeah, good. Yeah. Nice. Oh, there We're she goes. Good. good. Yeah. <laughs> um, tell people where they can find you. Obviously, you've got your socials all up. Tell them about your podcast with uh, John King as well. Yeah, Twitter, uh, Instagram. I don't know my handles. Uh, oh, I know there's wow. an underscore. So. That, that helps. That, that it does help. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just Ryan Carter something maybe. Something. Look for a big nose. <laughs> um, Stanley on 7th is the podcast. Uh, uh, John King, the all hockey hair team. Uh, he's the co-host of it. Brilliant guy, funny, looks at life through a different lens. Uh, good little one-two punch there. Wild, you know, wild kind of centric podcast. We like to cover the topics uh, once a week kind of. So we just like to have fun with it. I think you guys understand how we roll a little bit. But uh, yeah, it was fun. Thanks for having me today. Hey, guys, this is producer Fred. I just wanted to ask everyone to go out there and spread the word about Bar Down Beauties. Leave us a like, share, thumbs up, review, you name it, we want to hear from you. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, your favorite podcast app. Shout out to Karts for swinging by the booth again, as I told him before he left, not to break, you know, boost his ego too much. <laughs> Funniest guy I've ever spoken with, even when it's chirping me for the majority of the time. Yeah. Well, you, sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta take it on the chin and, you know, go about your day. Right. Hashtag content, baby. Content is king. Mm-hmm. And if that means we gotta get pushed around by Karts a little bit to make people laugh, we are willing to make that sacrifice. So you're welcome. Yes. Exactly. And, uh, make sure you go check out our video too, um, that we talked about in there about our, uh, hockey game. We played with carts and the, on the bench boys that's out on yes. our YouTube page. Uh, make sure you go give that a look because it, it, we probably made it sound really funny. It is as entertaining to watch as we made it sound in that interview. So uh, shout out to Fred for editing that as well. He killed for it. On editing that. it to make it look a little bit better than <laughs> yeah. what it really was. You should right? see the raw footage of that. That is not Oof. pretty. Yeah. Fred, Fred did us a favor and made us look a little bit more talented than what we actually are. So we love that. That's why we're not going to fire him permanently. We will bring him back because Fred edits us to make us look cool. So exactly well wrapping it up in segment three today be sure again yes go check that out on youtube 
uh, love, hate, indifferent Nico Sturm trade to the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for Tyson Jost, uh, centerman, uh, natural center, rather he's mm-hmm. playing, he played wing a little bit in Colorado first round pick out of North Dakota back in 2016, just never really got the opportunity to shine in Colorado. Weird, weird. They got some know, talented yeah. players out there. I um, wish we and had those problems. <laughs> I know, right. And Nico Sturm was entering unrestricted free agency this year. He had a cheap salary. Tyson yep. Jones carries a $2 million salary. He's got another year left on that contract that Minnesota pick up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alexis, what did you think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or were you kind of meh? So I initial reaction uh, was that I liked it. Um, And I think one of the biggest reasons that I'm totally fine with this trade and think it it could benefit the wild is because the fact that we wouldn't have been able to pay Nico Sturm. He was going to be gone at the end of the season anyway. And Jesse, you've made it a point to, to remind people of this over the last couple of weeks that there is guys on this team that as much as we love them and as much as we think they're a great piece to have, aren't going to be able to be on this team come next season. So you might Kevin as well Fiala. use them. It, Kevin Fiala being one of them and Nico serve was one of them. Um, mm-hmm. So you might as well use them as trade pieces if you can and try to get some kind of a return for them rather than just letting them walk into free agency um, and find a new team. So that was, I think the biggest reason that I'm okay with this trade. Um, and, and Nico Sturm has been great for the wild this year. I would even argue early in the season, he was one of the best players for the wild back when that fourth yes. line was was really pulling the weight when the first line was still trying to find their groove. Um, so I was sad to see him go. Um, the only thing that kind of has me wondering if it'll pan out or not is, and we'll talk about this in our cues with the Buttes. Um, so check that out as well. Um, is the fact that if you look at their numbers, Tyson Jones has more experience, um, more games played in the NHL than Nico Sturm does, but their averages for their points and all of that are about the same. So you're not getting right off the bat, this immediate upgrade of, oh my God, you know, Tyson Jones has twice as many points as Nico Sturm and the same amount of games played. It's not that kind of deal, but like Jesse just mentioned, he didn't really get to play the role that I think a lot of people know he's capable of playing um, when he was with Colorado. So hopefully here with the wild, the, the goal is, and I'm sure this is what was in Billy G's mind when he made this trade is we could get him to that spot that where he can really shine. And those numbers only go up and we see a return on the trade here. So I have a lot of optimism. This could work really well. I love that he can play wing or center. We know the wild have some center issues and, and maybe that could be used to their advantage and just to have the flexibility knowing he could play either role. I like that as well. Um, <clears throat> although his face off numbers are not great. Um, I think that was the most disappointing thing um, when mm-hmm. looking at his, his stats, but right. um, overall, I, I really like the trade and I think it's got a lot of potential. And a lot of times that's all you can ask for with the trade is that the potential for, um, you know, good is there. And I think it is in this case, Jesse, where do you stand on the scale? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to say I was surprised necessarily. I was just kind of was like, Oh, okay. That's interesting. When I, you know, got the notification about it. Um, you're right. You're getting a value for Nico storm. He comes at a low salary and I know Mm -hmm. everybody was worried. Oh, now Colorado can go get Claude Giroux, which yes, they absolutely can. Mm -hmm. Cause they took 2 million off their books with uh, Minnesota taking that. Um, I mean, Colorado is still going to be Colorado, Colorado at the end of the day, whether they have Claude Giroux or not, like you're still as a, Daryl Sutter had so (laughs) nicely said, it seems like a waste of eight days to be a wild card team playing the Colorado avalanche anyway. And that's without Claude Giroux. So, I mean, sure. That helps. I think, you know, change of scenery. I know it's so trite, but a change of scenery can help a guy. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that helps Tyson Jost. Um, He's a great team guy. And, And as we mentioned, even in segment one, and as we continue to mention throughout this year, that locker room, there's something special in that room, the way that they all come together. So bringing in a guy like Tyson, it's not going to disrupt it. It's (laughs) going to help it. Um, You know, they go out and get the win right away. Once he's traded, I don't want to say that was because of him. He played 10 minutes, Um, but uh, (laughs) you know, it it is very (laughs) important. 10 minutes. Um, And Nico will do, I mean, good for Nico. He gets to go to a true cup contending team for the rest of this year. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm eager to see what more Tyson can bring. He had very strong offensive power when he was at North Dakota. Um, and that was obviously why Colorado wanted to sign him. He's supposed to be really good on the PK. We saw mm-hmm. a, a little glimpse of him on special teams there. So, I mean, there's more to be desired, right? But it's game one by the time we're talking, he'll have two games <laughs> yeah. when you guys are listening to this. So how do you um, feel about, I got to ask quick, cause I saw a lot of people talking about this and it is a great talking point in sports here. How do you feel about interdivision trades? Because 
I know it's something that a lot of times in the NHL GMs will avoid it because they don't want to give a potentially good piece to a team. They might be fighting for a playoff spot with, or playing in the first round of the playoffs. Are right. you, do you kind of agree that you should stay away from that stuff or cause I loved what Billy G said again, he's had some great quotes this week. He said, I'm yes. not worried about them. I'm worried about us. And I think yes. that's a great mentality, but at the same time, it is something to consider. Where do you fall on that? Do you think you should stay away from it? I mean, you know what, at the end of the, again, you have to be able to compete against those teams. And yes, you don't want to give them something that's going to obviously give them an upper hand, but you can't completely eliminate the possibility that right. they could also help you, right? Like Colorado has very strong players and they only can carry so much as well. So to say, no, I can't take anybody from Colorado or no, they can't take anybody <laughs> from us. Why eliminate that potential? Yeah. Why, you know, and I understand where you look at Dallas, for instance, now that they're making this push brain Holpe off the market, right? Mm -hmm. Cause they want to keep all their guys, Joe Pavelski, they resign, they wouldn't trade them in a division. So I, I mean, I get it right. Cause it's the rivalry, the competition, Yeah. but if it works, it works. And there's no reason to just be like, Nope, can't talk to Colorado. Can't talk to Calgary. Can't mm -hmm. talk to Dallas and, and whatnot. Like, well, they have pieces that you need too, just as yeah. much as they, you have pieces they need. So I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm indifferent on that one. Right. Cause it's like, I get it. I get that. You don't want to give them an advantage, but also they could give you an advantage. I think you forget that mm -hmm. reverse. What do you think, Alexis? I, I agree with you that I think it's kind of silly to just dismiss the fact that there's so many good, and especially the central division, you know, especially in recent years has been one of the strongest divisions and one of the toughest yeah. divisions to play in has, has you've seen some of the best battles for playoff spots in the central division in the last handful of years which means there's a lot of talent there. So you're saying I'm not going to look within my own division to maybe find right. a piece I really need. So I, I agree that as it can be kind of scary to give a divisional opponent a piece that maybe is the missing piece for them and they become this, you know, top tier talent or in Colorado's case, you know, the next out otherworldly <laughs> talent. Um, I, I get it's a little scary, but at the end of the day, if you see a piece there that you think, hey, this is going to work really well for us, I have no problem with you taking that chance. And I'm not going to be mad if Nico Sturm becomes a superstar on Colorado, right? You, you think Tyson Jose is a good fit? go get him. I, I don't have any issues with the fact that he played for a divisional opponent. So at the end of the day, I'm more concerned. Like Billy G said, I'm concerned what you think is going to work well for this team. You can't be concerned with what everybody else around you is doing. You just can't. Because again, you have to go through them. Any like it, right. it, Colorado is still going to be Colorado, Nico Sturm or not. I mean, yes, you're not going to give them Kirill Kaprizov, right? Like you're not going to be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah here that you would go. be stupid. We'll <laughs> right. Like, I mean, you're not going to help them, but at the same time, like, and Nico's a fine player. He's a good fourth liner. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is what it is. Yes. Colorado worked it to their advantage where they get the cap space. Minnesota worked it to their advantage where they get a solid centerman and get something in exchange for Nico. So eh, I get it. I get why people question it, but and it, I mean, it's the timing, I suppose, right? Like sure. Certainly trade deadline time when everyone's making this push, it, it definitely seems, it feels weird, right? Like <laughs> it just kind of has a weird feeling like, Oh, we're going to trade with uh, you. And I know you're really good. And I mean, we might I get see you it, in the playoffs but... in a month and a half, but uh, exactly. we'll we'll we might waste, we might waste eight days with you. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see. So uh, we talk a little bit more about Nico Sturm, Tyson Jost in our cues with the Buttes. Be sure you swing on over to our now monetized YouTube channel. Shout, shout out, out to y'all. Shout out to y'all for, for making it. Love it. Shout out to my family who I know immediately <laughs> raced. I told them, I was like, why weren't you following it to begin with? Yeah. But whatever T, T. you know it's fine but uh yeah you guys are all awesome that's gonna do it for this week's episode uh again shout out to sodastick.com 15 off when you use card code not card code bardo <laughs> beauties uh shout We're out to better there. <laughs> almost there we're working on it was saint patrick's day yesterday guys all right i don't want to yeah, hear jesse, it i don't want to jesse was part of the ruckus outside my apartment on uh, thursday I, I, I just gotta say real fast i woke up I don't know what time, 7.30, you know, Thursday morning. Already I hear the noise outside of my apartment. I'm like, yeah, oh, okay, that's, that's what be. we do. And I was that's working from home do. up until like the evening. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to be hearing this all day. It increasingly got louder and louder and louder as the day went on. By the time I left for work on Thursday at like 5.30, it was, I saw some people who looked like they needed some assistance out on the street. In the part, yeah, yeah. It's just life. Yeah, so thanks uh, for participating in that, Jesse. You're welcome. It's a, it's a big day for my family. We march in the parade every year. Uh, we love it. I love any, it's a beer drinking holiday, you know, yeah. it's, 
It's good. I had a little bit too much green beer last night, but it was delicious anyway. I'm sure Better <laughs> Edge guys had a lot of green beer as well as they're celebrating March Madness. That's Better Edge, B E T T R Edge dot com code buttes b e a u t s will get you a free ten dollars play against alexis on thursday play against me on tuesday and beat the butte and then go just win some money in general mm-hmm. pick the cyclones to win the uh the best goal turning you know maybe that's what you should do i wouldn't recommend that but i would recommend it no <laughs> i wouldn't either pick houston alexis and i same yeah, way team houston. with the houston <laughs> team houston people are probably like you guys are dumb <laughs> but it, it happens team spiders too right the fighting spiders who beat the iowa hawkeyes so. right yes yes fighting pick spiders. them um, so that's better Ed. shout out to talk North for featuring us on their network. Shout out to Jim beam. Those who won those sweet Jim beam trapper hats. Can't wait to see the pictures of that. We gave them all away, right? Yeah. We're waiting on nice. one person. Hey, you know who you are on Instagram. DM us. Your account is private. We need your info to send you your hat, but the other four, yes. they should be in the mail. Uh, and you'll be getting them soon. Thanks for participating just in time for spring. It's going <laughs> to look awesome. Um, and as always, Thank you to you all. Be sure to follow us, subscribe, rate, like, share, all that good stuff. We, uh, you know, we're just getting into the the cusp of really good hockey. So mm. it's going to be really good talking points for Alexis and I. I mean, it's always good talking points yeah. for Alexis and I, but particularly good. Um, yeah, that's it. We're going to close out the episode with a little have a good week. Bye.